Hello everybody, it's Sadie Dwayne here in today. We are back with another video today on... So in this video today, we're going to talk about some of the anime stuff here today. Uh, I've been in this... Been kind of doing this anime kick mood, and a lot of people are seem to like... Are liking it and everything, and... It's going pretty well, and, and I'm really excited for it. Um... So this video, we're going to talk about some Dragon Ball Z stuff today. Um... As you can see, I'm actually wearing a DBZ shirt right now. It's in like a light pink color. Um... I have off to show you, so I have, I'll show you sometime. I have a couple other Dragon Ball Z shirts off to show you guys sometime, but I actually have. I even have a couple that have like really cool like designs to them as well. Um, I had a. Um, I even I even I even have I even had a couple of them that are like custom that were like custom made as well. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to talk about my favorite DBZ characters, and this and there is twenty different characters, so this is going to be my my top twenty favorite DBZ characters. So at number twenty, we have Tien. Um, why do I like Tien? I think Tien's an interesting character, and I feel like Tien is that character that doesn't get he just doesn't get a lot of credit, and I think he kind of deserves just a little bit more credit. Yes, I mean they've kind of let themselves go a little bit. They don't. They haven't really done a whole lot and stuff, so they've kind of made themselves weak a little bit. But I like to see Tien kind of push himself just a little bit to see where he's at. Um, I think Tien's an interesting character. I think in a couple of the abilities he has are like Tri Beam Cannon, Solar Flare, uh, Dodo Ray. Um, the uh, the multi the, the multiplier the the multiple um technique where he can copy himself capability um on on top of having you know Chao Tzu on top of him which is like his companion or student or you know assistant however you want to call him um <clears throat> I really enjoy Tian as a character. And it's it's interesting with Tien because you never know when he's actually around, and he's either gonna try to help or he's just gonna try to stay out of it. But either way, he he does manage to try to do something, try to either do something heroic or, you know, something to kind of help a little bit, even if it doesn't work. But um, because you know he had because uh, Tien is that one character. He's done several, you know try to do several attempts, you know, he's tried to, he did try to fight Cell, even though, even though he shot so many tri-beam cannons at him, he just wasted a bunch of energy, but he was doing it to get the androids away, so he was kind of, you know, sacrificing himself there to save the others, um, um, Tien did try to fight, uh, Mystic Majin Buu, even though Tien got his butt handed to him, but, um, but I really enjoy Tien as a character. I, I think Tien is that one character that he, he tries, and I just find him as a very interesting character. Um, and at number 19, we have Goten. Yes, Goten at number 19. Um, I like Goten. I think he's an interesting character. I definitely think he has a lot of character build up, he, a lot of character build up, and especially, um, you know, learning from his dad and his brother and, you know, trying to, trying to get where they are. And with the new super superhero movie that they had, um, you know, we got to see them growing up, both him and Trunks growing up just a little bit. Uh, I look forward to seeing, you know, I look forward to seeing what else, they, what else he could be doing in the future and stuff. So I think it'll be pretty interesting to see how far Goten has grown and as a developed character. Hopefully they don't make him a wasted character now that they kind of grew him up a little bit. And at number 18, we have Kid Trunks. Um, I do like Kid Trunks. Um, yes, he's a bit, yeah, he's a bit of a kind of a stuck up character, kind of a stuck up and kind of just kind of, um, But I think uh, Trunks is an interesting character, and him and Trun him and Goten are like the best are like the best friends. Not only that, but um, you know him and Trunks do work together. They they do tr they do work together as a team, and even though they do both do stupid things, 
here and there just for the fun of it. But I think Kid Trunks is definitely a character, an interesting character that's growing, getting, that's growing in development as well with Goten and stuff and trying to get up there where his dad is at. And by him learning from a lot of things from his dad, what he has taught him, um, Trunks, I think, is going to be an interesting character growing up. And I think that's why I have Kid Trunks as, my, as one of my favorite characters in my top 20. At number 17, we have Krillin. Um, I think one of the reasons why I like Krillin so much is because... Well, Krillin has been there since Dragon Ball. He has been a, you know, developed, grown character in a bond with Goku. And... You know, he has learned hearing things from Goku, not just that, but you know, Krillin is that heart is that is that heart character who tries. Yes, he does get himself handed to him a lot in fights and but you know, there has been several times in DBZ where he actually has shown he's he can. He can fight and he can he tries, even though he gets himself handed to him a lot and dies a lot. But Krillin is that one character who'll do whatever he can. Um like, he did fight Cell, like, the Imperfect Cell. Then he did try to fight Perfect Cell, but he just kind of, Cell just kind of stood there with not even phased by Krillin at all. Um, he did fight, he also did, you know, did several fights with Frieza and stuff as well. Um, not just that, but he would, he, he improved a lot really well in Super. Which, you know, he had, even though he still had, you know issues and things like that but he did have some pretty interesting improvements and um i think i think krillin is an interesting character and i like that he i like the i like that he cares a lot for not only his family like 18 and his daughter Marin. i like that he is a dad and you know he he's he's a very support he's a very supportive dad um even though he does things that are just kind of but I like, I like, I like their family. I like their, I like, I like, I like the love they shares with them. Not just that, but I like, I like, I like Krillin as a, as a character and I like to see him grow more in development in the future. Um, at number 16, we have Android 18. I think Android 18 is probably one of the most interesting female fighters in Dragon Ball Z. Um... After all, she broke Vegeta's arm with uh, one swift kick in Super Saiyan form. Um, I do, I do like I do like the fact that Android eighteen shows her caring for Android eighteen, but it's interesting how she shows that she's the one that wears the pants of the family, not Krillin. Um, even though she's the strongest in the family, but I liked I liked her character in Super. Uh, I liked I liked seeing her grow in development, and she was pretty. Not only, not, not only was she useful in Super, but you know I seen I liked her growing in development, and I look forward to seeing her grow more in development and stuff in the future. And at number and at number fifteen, we have Android Seventeen. I do enjoy Android Seventeen. I think he's the most interesting character. When he as a villain, he's pretty menacing. Um. But later on, as you know, he grow as you as you grow into him. You know, he starts becoming more of a kind of a light sider character. And then when you get to Super later on, you know, he's he, he's more he's 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 a, he's a father to somebody. We never really seen who he was with, but we know he's a father to somebody. And you know he ha and you know he takes care of um, animals as like a park ranger type deal. But, you know, um, Android 17 has, has been kind of an interesting character, and not only that, but he was the MVP in Super. So, like, uh, I look forward to seeing Android 17 and 18 kind of growing more in the future, and hopefully do more with both of them and stuff, because 17, is, uh, I think, has been kind of an interesting character to me, and I think there's a lot, I think there's quite a few things you can do with them later. Um, at number 14, we have PyCon from the Otherworld Tournament. Why do I like PyCon? Well, interesting factor. My favorite race in Dragon Ball Z is the Saiyans. Next to that is the Namics and stuff. Um, 
I think PyCon fits in there pretty well. I find him not only a mysterious character, because that's how, how he kind of portrayed as, even though they portrayed him as a non-canon character, I really wish they would canonize him and do something with him and with the Z Fighters, because I, because I know for a fact it'd be interesting for him to be an ally with the Z Fighters, and it'd be kind of interesting to see PyCon do a team up with Piccolo. I think that'd be so interesting. Not just that, but I think the di the the voicing and the dialoguing between the two of them would be really interesting if they if they were ever to do something like that. But I like PyCon's abilities. Um, I think it's really interesting that, you know, PyCon has, like, flaming-like type abilities, which is really interesting for Dragon Ball. Um, uh, what's the other one he has? Uh, is it Tyrant Tornado or is it Thunder? I'm trying to think of how he pronounces the tornado word. He has, like, a tornado... Oh, Hyper Tornado, excuse me. Um, Hyper Tornado, um, that one rush attack that he can do. Um, and the Thunder Flash ability, of course. Um, then there's like a blast attack that he can do. That's like a triple. That's like a triple Kai blast deal, but that was shown in I think the uh, Fusion Reborn movie. Um, but I, I, I find I find Pycon a really interesting character, and I feel like Pycon would be. And I would love to see them do more with Pycon. I like to see them bring him into Super. I like to see them do something with him. I kind of hope they bring him in the new Dragon Ball Z Spark and Zero game. Um, I like to see, you know, PyCon return more often. And from what I understand, PyCon is a very popular character. And from what I understand, in Japan, and a lot of people do like that character. Now, don't quote me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure how popular he is in Japan, but I know he's a, he is a popular character in there. So, um, I definitely would enjoy seeing PyCon return. And at number 13, we have Hit from Dragon Ball Super. I think Hit is a very interesting character. Um, I like his Invisibility Kai, like, deals. That he just, like, literally, like, kills you with, like, invisibility, like... But, you know, he has so many different movesets, it's really interesting at what Kai, what Hit can do. And, you know, Hit is, a, is another one of those mis mister mister mysterious characters like PyCon. That's kind of why I think PyCon and Hit have... They have similarities when it comes to mysteries between the two of them. Because they're both different characters and different abilities. But they both have that mysterious... To, they, have, they both have that mysterious thing to them. And... I think Hit is not only an interesting character, but... His time skipping ability, I think, is really interesting and unique, and quite a few other abilities he can do as well. But he's just an interesting character, and he seems to be that one character that will can literally beat you to the punch, and just walk and tell about it. Um, but um, I find, but I like it as a as a cool character, and I look forward to seeing what else they do with him in the future. I think it is a interesting and awesome character and a lot of people seem to enjoy it pretty well too at number 12 we have piccolo um i why do i like piccolo so much well since dragon ball and then you come to dragon ball z as him growing a developed character and then later on he he, he starts you know he has his redemption becoming a good guy you know and he starts showing his friendship to gohan and taking care of him like he was his own son and i think a lot of that really grew him in development and made him a loving character and i'm i'm, I'm and that's not the only thing that made him a loving character i think his change of i, I feel like the, his change of heart really impacted and made piccolo more of a likable character and i think that's why piccolo is one of my favorite characters and you know he's always there for Gohan. He he's his he's like his guardian. He will show up when you don't expect Piccolo to be there. And I think that's what's really interesting with Piccolo and you know with him taking care of not watch over Gohan, but you know he's also been what, trying to watch over Pan now too, which is Gohan's daughter. So he kind of like protects both of them. And I like I I think Piccolo is a really interesting character. So. And I look forward to seeing what the, what else they can do with him now that he has a new form and stuff like that now. It's really interesting. Okay. 
at number 11, now we got a couple, we got some villain, we got some villain ones in here as well. At number 11, we have Frieza. I think Frieza is probably one of my favorite villains from Dragon Ball Super, and I know, I know Frieza is a pretty big popular character for a lot of people, uh, especially villain-wise. Um, do I think Frieza is used a lot? Yeah. But I'm sure there's a reason for it, and... You know, he, he's, not only was he a rival to Goku, but he's, he was Goku's arch, and arch nemesis, and still is, and he, and Freeze is that character that is literally putting that point across. And not only that, but, you know, they made him useful in Dragon Ball Super, putting him on the team in the Tournament of the Power, um, with Freeze's gold form that he has, now he has a black form now, um, I find Frieza a really interesting character, and I look forward to seeing what else they do with him late in the future. Um, I think uh, Frieza is not only not only is this tyrant like villain, but he's a likable character, and I look forward to seeing what else they do with him. At number ten, we have Cell. Um, I think Cell is probably my second favorite villain in Dragon Ball Z. Um, Cell was not only just a menacing character but he was also you know not one to be trifled with he like he held up a tournament and de demanded you fight him um but i think the fight between him and gohan between team Go gohan was probably one of the best memorable moments in dragon ball z on top of you know the uh, frieza saga as well with goku and frieza i think uh that fight there is probably one of the most up there iconic fights in Dragon Ball Z moments. And I think Cell is an interesting character. And I would like to actually, I would like to, for them to actually bring back Cell, not the Cell Max that they use for Super Superhero. I like to, for them to actually do, do an actual, you know, a kind of a returning deal like they did with. Freeze and Red Redemption F. I'd like to see them do a similar take on that with Cell. Um, that's my thoughts on Frieza, on Cell. Excuse me. At number nine, we have Majin Buu. Um, I kind of like... It's really hard to pick what ones I like out of Majin Buu because there's several different outputs of Majin Buu out there. You have the Fat Buu, you have... Um, the Dark Boo before he ate Majin Boo. Um, then you have Super Boo, you have Mystic Boo, then you have um, Mystic Boo, then you have um, So you have Fat Boo, you have the Dark Boo, you have um, the one Majin Boo character, you have Mystic Boo, Super Boo, then you have Kid Boo. So you have six different versions of Majin Boo out there. And I think it's really hard to tell pick one, but I think my favorite one is I think my favorite one is going to be probably Super Boo. I think Super Boo when he absorbed uh Mystic Gohan when he absorbed Gohan and stuff. Um, he was pretty powerful. I mean, he wasn't... I, I think... I think, from what people are telling me, Suru, I think, was a little bit more powerful than Kid Buu. And... I kind of believe that, because Kid Buu was strong, but I don't know exactly how strong he actually was, because... Um... I'm sure some of you all can kind of fill that one in for me, so I can kind of get one understanding in that one because uh um and then of course i would i, I, I do kind of enjoy you know super boo as well uh not super boo but kid boo as well i think kid was interesting i think the dark boo was a really interesting one too before he absorbed uh before he ate majin boo to get to get the color back on him i actually kind of wanted to see that boo kind of do a little bit more action than just eat majin boo and be done with it but i'm assuming 
that boo there, the dark boo, probably didn't, probably wasn't near as strong. So I'm assuming him by absorbing him was like the output that he needed first and then take them out. But if if you have another opinion on the Dark Boo, um, I'd like to hear your opinion on that. Because like, I think the Dark Boo was kind of interesting. And it'd be kind of in interesting to see what he, what he could have done before 8 Majin Boo. But um, that's my uh, that's, that's a favorite villain I do enjoy is Majin Boo. At number eight, we have Freeze's brother, Cooler. I like Cooler. I think Cooler is a menacing villain. Not only is he a tyrant, but he is just a monster. Um, especially in, especially in the Revenge of Cooler, where he's like, where he's just like huge, it just like beats the living hell out of Goku. Um, especially a couple of the move sets, and I think my favorite thing about that movie, not only as cooler but that movie had some of the coolest like rock soundtrack in that in that you had disturbed you had quite a few other musical bands playing the background with when the battles were going on between them two which were just i think it not only does that i feel like it makes it iconic not only does it make it iconic but i feel like it makes it aware of what's going on and what's about to happen in the movie that's kind of my thing on it and then, of course, when you have the return of Cooler, where he comes back as, like, Mecha Cooler, or Metal Cooler, whatever you call, whatever they call him, I find him, uh, that one a really interesting movie. It's almost like... It's almost like the Z-Warriors versus the Terminator, but a different aspect with Cooler. And that's literally what it felt like, in some, in some degree, but just different. And... Actually, I kind of feel like that's how cool, Return of Cooler's movie was. It was kind of like the Z Warriors versus Skynet and the Terminator robots. That's kind of how that looked like. But it's it's interesting with the Return of Cooler because I kind of like the the mecha version of him because he was just different upgrades and he had different ability different ability upgrades too, which were interesting. Um, yeah, I enjoy Cooler as a villain. That's my, one of my favorite characters. At number seven, we have Future Trunks. Um, why do I like Future Trunks? Future Trunks is that character of hope. Um, I feel bad for him because, you know, he's lost a lot of people in his timeline, especially now Bulba in his timeline, which is really heartbreaking when Goku Black takes him takes her out, and I find that very and. Um, I also have Go I'm, I'm also going to talk about Future Trunks and Goku Black in here. I didn't really put him in there, but um, Future Trunks is not only an interesting villain, an interesting sorry, excuse me, an interesting character, but you know, he's a well-grown, developed character, and you know, he's done everything to save his timeline from the current one being messed with, and. Goku Black, I think, is a really is a really cool favorite character, favorite villain of mine as well. His plan to annihilate the Saiyan race is really interesting, even though Goku Black, which is actually Zamazu, um, and Goku's and Goku's body, I find it um, very interesting. And not only that, not only is it very interesting, but I like the fact that um, his annihilation is just interesting. It's almost, the way with Goku Black kind of reminds me of it's there to me. I find Goku Black's momentum almost kind of like a Star Wars kind of like inspiration feel, kind of like a Darth Vader Empire Strikes Back kind of like feel with it. Um, if you have another opinion on it, let me know. Um, that's just kind of what I think on it with Goku Black. Um, moving on to the next character. At number six, we have Goku's dad, Bardock. Um, I enjoy Goku, Goku Bardock's uh, dad and some of the couple of spinoff movies he had. You know, you had your um, Father of Bardock movie, then you also had the episode of Bardock where they did like a fan dub and, you know, another 
another, another installment, and then they also did, did something a little bit with him and the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie from the beginning of the movie, which I thought was really interesting, you know, seeing more of Bardock, and then we got to see Goku's mother, Jean, for the first time, which was, which we learned that Jean is a loving mother, and, you know, you kind of feel that for both of them, too, because... I kind of really want to see them do stuff with more Bardock in the future, like bring him to meet the characters at some point, do another movie installment with him. I really enjoy his character and stuff. Maybe they might do a, a movie installment where he's fighting gas. I think that'd be kind of cool to see how he out outdone gas, like we heard in the comic, like we read in the like we were reading the manga and stuff about. I'd be in, I think it'd be interesting to see how that all comes to play just do kind of a spin-off in between those deals with bardock i think it'd be really interesting um at number five we have another villain character that i like and that is super janemba um i think super janemba is a really interesting character and um he's almost he's he like he likes satan in the dbz universe in a way i mean I find him, like, a really interesting character. Not only that, but he's just a psycho. And I find him kind of a really scary villain to go up against because there were so many in interesting, cool abilities he had that were just, like, out of his world. Like, reality-type abilities. Um, he had several other, other like, a couple of different cool uh, teleportation abilities and stuff as well. Oh, and, um, he can create, like, portals, like, the like pocket key to portals, and have, like, blasts afflect in a direction that it's coming from a different direction that you wouldn't expect it to. That's kind of interesting. And just other things, uh, I really, I do, I, I do, really do, really do, excuse me, really do enjoy, uh, Super Genova as a, as a villain character. Um, at number four, we have Gohan. I think Gohan is a loving character, especially for Videl and Pan. Um, but but I but I do like the fact that Gohan is, is a well-grown, developed character. Yes, he has had his moments and he's had some bad moments, but I'm kind of hoping they, after the superhero installment, I'm kind of hoping they, I kind of hope they make a, a good comeback with him, because uh, I know the last. <laughs> few years what they was doing with him was not great um i did enjoy his super tournament the power of um and stuff i did enjoy his moments in there too those were pretty good fight moments and it you know it made him grow as a character and you know what else we could see go on to in the future later um at number three we have broly um I think my favorite one right now is Super Broly because I want to see what they do with him more because he kind of made they're kind of it seems like they're making him an ally now. Um, but I, I did enjoy like the Z Broly ones as well. Just a absolute monster, just trashing Goku and everything. Um, but I find I find Broly a really interesting character, not just a character but an absolute monster. Um. And I think that's why Broly is probably a favorite character of mine, because I really enjoy, you know, I really enjoy his character and everything, so. At number two, we have Vegeta. Um, Vegeta is the Prince of All Saiyans. Um, not only is Vegeta my favorite character, and one of my favorite characters, but I enjoyed his character growth later years in development. I've li I've, I've li I like his growing respect for Goku, more so. Yes, them two still bicker. They still have that rivalry. They still but you know they're working they they learn to work together as a team, even though that's not what Vegeta wants to do. But you know, Vegeta is that character that's just a well grown developed character and not only is he a well loved character for a lot of fans, but he is a very good dad to his family. He, he really is. And we've seen a lot of that through Super and stuff. You know, he's done moments where he didn't train and focus on being a dad. And that was kind of an interesting, you know, interesting deal for Vegeta. I mean, that might have been a little soft for him, but, you know, he's 
he's trying to be that person. And... But, you know, Vegeta, just because he's a dad doesn't mean Vegeta doesn't fight and does, 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 hasn't forgotten how to fight. He's still... He's still the badass he's supposed to be. But that's just... My thing. Uh, but, I do, but, yeah, Vegeta's a very good character of mine. At number one, we have... One and all, Goku. Um, Goku is one of my probably one of my favorite characters in the Z. Yes, it is Goku. He is the hero of this of the story. Not only is he the hero of the story, but he is a character that trains every day. And yes, he is a dad too. But like, I think Goku can work a little bit on being a better person of that. Um, yes, he is a good fight. Yes, he is a good fighter. But. Um, Goku has had his moments where he does get himself kicked a little bit, and but you know I do like I do enjoy seeing Goku learn more, and I would like to see him you know get a couple more new Super Saiyan forms. Not just that, but I also want to see Goku you know learn new abilities and stuff, other than just transformations. Like what else can Goku learn as far as abilities? Because at this point, Goku is just upgrading his arsenal of abilities. He's got Kamehameha. He's got the Spirit Bomb. Even though it's non-canon, he has Dragon Fist ability. He can do the Solar Flare. He can do a Destructive Disc. He has his Instant Transmission. Um, trying to think of some other abilities he can do. Um, he has his Instant Transmission Kamehameha capability as well. Um... Yeah, but um, the thing is, I'm just uh, I'm really in interested in seeing what uh, Goku what Goku's gonna learn and in, in the future and stuff. But hopefully, we get some Dragon Ball new Dragon Ball content and and some new Dragon Ball Super or some type of Dragon Ball here pretty soon. Yes, and then we're getting Dragon Ball Diama, where they're going back to kids. But we'll see how well that goes. But um, if you guys like this video, hit the like button and uh, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite uh, Dragon Ball Z characters are. Um, I'd love to know. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the button as always, and I'll see you in the next video, and goodbye.